Shout it loud, hallelujah. Shout it, Jericho destroying, hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet, please. As we close our eyes and raise up our two hands to the Lord and pray for ourselves loud and clear in this song. Holy Ghost, do it again. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Possibility, possibility, possibility. You over Jairai, over the sea, over Shaka. Hallelujah. Possibility, possibility. up your right hand to the heavenly's beloved. Oh, thou that troubled the Israel of my destiny. The God of Elijah shall trouble you today. In the name of Jesus. Jesus' name we pray.
Our Lord and our God, we thank you for this day. We praise your holy name for bringing us to this wonderful service. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. And so, wonderful God, touch us by your power tonight. Lay your hands upon our destiny. Teach us directly from your feet. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Shout it loud, hallelujah. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Amen. Amen. This evening we're going to look at some of the deepest areas of scripture. And which sometimes can make a difference between a person living or dying. It has been well said that every man's mountain is a mountain of his ignorance. We are looking at what I call command the morning. Command the morning. Or if you like, commanding the morning. Sisters, what did I say just now? Brothers, what was that that was said? In Job chapter 38, I read verses 12 and 13. Job chapter 38 from 12 to 13. It's good for you to follow all the scriptures that are going to be read and be able to understand some deep things about the word of God. Job chapter 38 from verse 12. Are we there? This is God speaking to Job. Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days? That is Job, since your mother gave birth to you. Have you ever commanded the morning and caused the day spring to know its place? Another word for day spring is dawn. Day spring there means dawn. You can say dawn to know its place. The dawn is the period before the sun begins to arise. When the sun begins to come up, dawn. That it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it. Notice this is God speaking. And notice that this fellow Job is a contemporary of Moses. And this book of Job really is the first book in the Bible. And here you have these deep words being said. I read it again in verse 12 and 13. As thou commanded the morning since thy days, and caused the day spring to know its place, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it. Another version of the Bible says, Have you ever in your life given orders to the morning? Have you ever sent the dawn to its correct post? Another version of the Bible says, in all your life, have you ever ordered the morning? Or have you ever shown the dawn its place? So that it may get hold of the corners of the earth and shake wickedness out of it. These are deep scriptures. But let me give you a little bit of background so you know where we are coming from. The Bible says, in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. The Bible always speaks of plural heavens, plural heavens. The Bible talks about three kinds of heavens. There is the highest heaven, which is called the third heaven. This is the place and throne of God. You can find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. 2 Corinthians 12, 2. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such a one caught up into the third heaven. And I knew such a man. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise and had unspeakable words which is not lawful for a man to utter. That is the third heaven. 
the paradise where the throne of God is. The Bible talks about the second heaven. The second heaven on the other hand refers to the dwelling place of spirits. Bad spirits. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and power. Rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness wickedness in heavenly places so there's the second heavens which is the habitation of cruelty habitation of darkness but then there's the first heaven too this first heaven is what you find in genesis chapter 1 genesis chapter 1 from verse 14 genesis chapter 1 verse 14 it says this and god said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs. Let them be for seasons. Let them be for days. Let them be for years. Look at that again. Verse 14. Genesis chapter 1. And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven. What is the duty of those light? One, to divide the day from the night. Two, for signs. Three, for seasons. Five, for days. Six, for years. And seven, in verse 15. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. Then he made the stars also. What I've just read to you now is what is called the ordinances of heavenly bodies. The way they operate. Therefore, beloved, your life, my life, the life of everything on earth is connected to light. 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 It is the light that decides your age. It is the light that decides whether you are growing old or you are growing young, you are growing tall or short. It is the light that determines life. And there is a power that rules the night. There is a power that rules the day. That now takes us to the wonderful words of the psalmist who said, The sun shall not smite me by day. Nor the moon by night. These have very, very serious implications. The few verses I've read to you now are being used by powers of darkness against ignorant Christians. Because they are aware that many of us don't understand it and we don't know how they run. Therefore, in these heavenly places that you see above the sun, the moon, and the stars, they're there. And God knows that there are powers therein. Therefore, God forbids the worship of the sun, the moon, and the stars. Because when people discover this, they began to worship those elements. And people now are taking over these ordinances that God has ordained to help us in order to oppress us. The heaven is supposed to declare the glory of God. It's supposed to give light on the earth. It's supposed to be for signs and for seasons. For days and for years. To rule the day and the night. But powers of darkness and enemies of God. They have captured those things. They are now using it to receive satanic worship. They are also using it to oppress man. What we are saying this evening is beyond I am going for deliverance. No. If somebody has raised an altar against your life in the star. It is more than I am going for deliverance. Most deliverance cases, what we are doing is removing from a person's life a deposit or presence of darkness. It doesn't remove a conspiracy against you in the heavens. And then when you cross over from that first heaven to the second one, then you see an array of wicked spirits. And beloved, when we are talking about wicked spirits, we are talking about spirits that are even more wicked than the devil himself. Spirits that even the devil himself does not have control over them. 
Because they are wickedness incarnate. Right there in that second realm lies the abode of what we normally call ancestral spirits. And many people who pray day and night, as the angel of blessing is bringing their blessing down, they are confronted at the second heavens by ancestral spirits, angels of darkness, who will say, no, you will not take this down. This is why prayer is a difficult work. This is why we need the power and the spirit of Elijah. Because once, once your prayers and your life is on the chariot of fire, it will go through without any hindrance. Remember, Daniel was on his knees for 21 days. But God answered his prayer day one. And an angel of God was bringing the answer back to Daniel. But right there at that second level, there was a wicked power that was strong enough to confront the angel that was bringing it. And if Daniel had gotten up from his knees, that angel would have gone back. But the prayer that Daniel was praying now brought reinforcement from heaven. So when we are talking about wickedness, the most wicked spirits are over our heads above. And so I want you to understand this tonight. Just to give you some background so you know what we are talking about. But we as born again Christians, part of the authority that God gave to us extends to the works of God's hands. All the works of God's hands. Including the sun, the moon, the stars, and the host of heaven. According to Psalm 8 verse 6. Psalm 8 verse 6 says this. Psalm 8 verse 6. Thou made us him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. No matter how wild you are as an animal, man can put it under control. I was reading the testimony of those who went to evangelize in Ekwe. I mean evangelists from this church. They went to Ekwe. They did a dry fast. And they were going to break their fast with Akara and something else. So one sister prayed on her food and the, the wind blew away her clothes. So she ran to go and bring her clothes back. By the time the sister would come back to her food, a snake had gotten there. The snake had eaten half of the Akara. The snake had punched the pure water bag open. And the snake was already eating the gari by the time she came. So men of God had to attack the snake. And mounted the strange snake and burnt it. But those living in that building said they had never seen a serpent there before. We're talking about wickedness. And I want you to know that you either fight or you perish. There is no middle camp. All the churches where they are dancing and singing and jumping up now and playing this God. Don't worry. They are still coming back to pray. Serious prayer. They are coming back. Because there is a host of wickedness above us. And they sit down and plan evil. They devise evil. They mastermind it. Wickedness in the heavens. God gave us dominion over all these animals. He puts all things under interfaith, including the sun, the moon, the stars, and everything that God made. God knew that those bodies could misbehave and they could be used against us. But when we are ignorant of what to do, then they do all kinds of havoc to our lives. That's why in the Bible, you find many men of God who dealt with heavens and the elements. Moses caused darkness in Egypt, and that dealt with the power of Egypt. Elijah too dealt with the elements of heaven. Deborah spoke to the stars. Isaiah, uh, Isaiah turned the sun dial of hires. Joshua spoke to the sun and stopped it. Beloved, we need to wake up. There are many things we need to understand. One woman in the Lord many years back went to bury her father. And as the burial was about to start, some people came and said, we are rain makers. So if you don't pay this, don't pay that, don't give us one goat, we shall scatter this place with rain. And the woman said, eh? You want to scatter this place with rain? Don't you know the person you are talking to? God has given me dominion over all these things you are saying. You must represent the devil. The, the, the people say, okay. You shall see. 
So they went to somewhere and they were divining rain against that place. The rain came down on their heads. The rain battered them seriously. It never got to where the sister was. The three rainmakers died in the flood of the rain they called. We need to understand certain things so we know where we are going. The most wicked men don't hang juju on their necks. They don't put anything on. They connect to the dark powers of the heavens. Said, has thou ever commanded the morning since thy days and caused the day spring to know its place that it might take hold of the hands of the earth that the wicked might be shaken out of it. When he says the wicked might be shaken out of it, it means wickedness is already entrenched. So if you don't command, you don't take any action, it remains entrenched. It remains entrenched there. There was a time one sister had this kind of message and she prayed some prayers and God showed her the moon because she had these children going to school. All of them started becoming dull and dull and dull and dull. She now prayed this kind of prayers and she saw the moon and she saw the class teacher of her children sitting on the moon. This sister was very bold. The next morning she was in school. Went straight to that teacher. Say, look, release my children from those she want to use. I will go, I'm going back home to pray now. If I see, find that you are using your power, you are getting from the moon against them. I shall be back to deal with you. Everybody thought the teacher was going to fight. And quarrel and box. Yes, I sorry, ma. I didn't know that you understand. And immediately the children were set free. And those children were doing very badly, began to do well again. A person's brain can be transferred to the second heavens. A person's husband can be transferred to the second heavens. That's why God asked Job. Say, Mr. Job, answer this question. Since you were born, have you ever commanded the morning? Have you ever spoken to the dawn to know his place? Meaning that the dawn too used to misbehave. Have you ever told you to know his place? Have you ever commanded that they should take charge of the ends of the earth and shake out the wicked out of it? So I'm now going to draw out some lessons from Job 38 that we have read. Has thou ever commanded the morning since thy days and caused the dead spring to know his place that he should take hold of the ends of the earth and that the wicked might be shaken out of it? Let's now draw out some deep lessons. If you are from Riverine area, <laughs> but I pray, because anytime you see the full moon in the skies, activity of witchcraft will increase, water level will rise in the seas and in the rivers, and insanity and madness will go up. So you better pray very well. Let's draw some lessons. Lesson number one is this. The early hours of the morning as serious spiritual influence on our lives. The early hours of the mornings has very serious spiritual influence on our lives. One of the sad things about modern life, particularly Lagos life, when we first of all knew Christ, people like us, when we knew Christ, 5 a.m. in the morning, there is always a morning prayer meeting in the church. Then by 6, there is evening service. And that's every day every day apart from sunday there'll be morning service early morning service evening service 5 a.m we're in the church and people close from there and go to work they gather early morning fire and take the fire to work that time but gradually gradually all these things died off died off no early morning prayer meetings again in those days we will have programmed our words into heavens. But now we have abandoned the heavens to those who wake up before us. The children of the bond women, they program things into the heavens before believers wake up. Whereas in those days, when they are programming their own, we are programming our own. And when two powers confront each other, the lesser power must bow. Where they say, go carry out what I will say in the name of Jesus. In those days. But now, while they are saying they are going into the skies, it is then some of us will change again. <laughs> Go. 
And then by the time we wake up, say, oh, things are not working. I didn't get the contract. This didn't work out. How will it work out? When before you woke up, your contemporaries have taken control of the dawn, they have given the dawn their orders, they have already commanded the mornings to favor them. And they are the powers of the second heavens. They have assisted them. Where do you go from there? I prayed with somebody in my counseling room about five years ago. Very, very big man in this country. Immediately we finished praying and he stood up. He left my counseling room. There was a live tortoise on his seat from where he stood up. I said, come back, sir. Look at this. He said, ah. I said, sorry, sir. I, I, when the person did the juju for me, he said he threw it into the sea. But the man did not throw it into the sea. Just program it back into his life. And prayer brought it out. You say, this is serious. But beloved, there are people sitting down listening to me here tonight. What has been programmed into your body is worse. Only that you don't know. Or you have not prayed to the level where it will jump out. The early hours of the morning has very serious spiritual influence on our lives. You may not understand this, but our enemies do. Our enemies do. By the time some Christians are doing their morning prayers, they are half awake, half asleep. They are reading the Bible, they are missing the verses. The saliva is still dropping on the Bible. How will you cope with the forces that are around? Yeah, I have anointing. anointing. I'm a pastor. Oh. Many pastors don't pray. And this is very sad. That's lesson number one. Lesson number two is this. The morning has ears. And they do ear. They have ears. And they do ear. In fact, as far as the Bible is concerned, there is no living thing and non-living thing. Everything has ears. As far as the Bible is concerned. Number three lesson you can pick is that the morning hours can be commanded. You, you have an exam in that day. You wake up before the sun rises and program your success into the skies. They let us see who will go and dismantle this. But when you don't program, no nothing. I just woke up like that. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I go now, I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Open my understanding. In Jesus' name. Amen. But somebody woke up at 5.30 and for the next half an hour he was on his spiritual mat and he was programming his words into the atmosphere. And so you go there, he gets it, you don't get anything. And you say, ah! Oh no. Give me deliverance form. I want to go to prayer city. Whereas, simple operations will have got you what you wanted. The morning can be commanded. Number four lesson is this. The dawn, or what the Bible called day spring, can also receive orders. Dawn can receive orders. The fifth lesson is this. The dawn can carry out the instructions you give. The instructions you give before the rising of the sun. The dawn will carry it out. Six. There are ordinances in the morning hours that forces the earth to ensure that you have a happy morning. There are ordinances there. Most time, by the time we are saying, good morning, sir. The morning is already bad. Because evil had been programmed against the person that morning. And it did not dismantle it. There are ordinances that force the earth to ensure that you have a happy morning. And the major part of defeat that believers suffer from is on the bed in the morning. Because the devil is an early riser. By the time you wake up from that bed and you begin to confess sorrow and bitterness and poverty and everything, trouble happens. Seven. The mornings decide the day. The mornings decide the day. That is, every good thing you desire for your life for that day Call it forth in the mornings before the rising of the sun. Once the sun has risen before you, the enemies have already programmed themselves. 
You can program the mornings and go back to sleep. But then once the enemies get up before the rising of the sun and programs it, and it's the ray of the sun that wakes you up, brother of mercy. Eight. Wickedness is already entrenched in the heavens and in the ends of the earth. I want you to understand that one. It's already entrenched in the heavens and in the ends of the earth. I told you a story here before of a woman that came out naked, held the first breast to the heavens, issued curses on her child, raised the first, second one to there, and curses the second child, and then raised her right leg. And causes the third child. All three children were deported back to Nigeria in one day. Although they live in different countries, they arrive at the airport the same day. All three. And as I'm talking to you now, all three, including the woman, they are dead. Wickedness is entrenched there. Without inviting wickedness in the second heavens, they are already wicked by themselves. When they now see somebody who has power to invite them to affect a person, they become extra wicked. Lesson number nine is this. If we do not shake off the wickedness in the heavens, it will affect us. In fact, it's already affecting many. Lesson number ten. If you want ultimate control over the power that exists on earth, you have to control from the heavens. Control from the heavens. You want ultimate control over the negative powers that are roaming around on earth. You have to control from the heavens. Point number 11 is this. You have the power as a born again child of God to mobilize the resources of heaven, heavens to help you. You have the power as a child of God. And point number 12 is this. You must learn how to break the enchantment and ordinances of satanists that are programmed into the heavens. You need to learn them. Beloved, the principles I'm sharing here this evening, and this is why I'm talking slowly. If you understand these principles very well, if you understand these principles very well, deeply, war befalls any situation that wants to waste your life. If you understand this principle very well, you can invoke the day, the dawn, to protect you. You must know what to do. You say, but what position do I have to be in order to command the day? What kind of people command the day and the day does not say, I'm not coming? Number one is humble people. Humility. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. That's the first key. Humble themselves. Humility is a very serious matter. Number two, for those who want to speak and command the mornings, you must live in Jesus and let his word dwell richly in you. An average member of Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry is supposed to be able to read from memory at least 52 memory verses. Every year, you ought to be able to read 52. By the time you memorize all the ones in the Sunday school pamphlets, memorize the one for the spiritual hospital, memorize the one for the house fellowship, there will be scripture in your body, your soul, and your spirit. But laziness has stopped us from doing this. The third key is that you must know who you are in Christ. Know who you are in Christ. The fourth key is this. You must say always say what God says. Say what God says. Say what God says. And the fifth key, you must have violent faith. Violent faith. And the sixth key, you must live in purity. Your life must be pure. No dirtiness at all. And the last key, you must pray specific prayers. Specific prayers. What kind of prayers are used to command the mornings? I will give you samples now. Before we now test it out ourselves. When somebody begins to pray like this. My father. Everything you 
you have not planted in the heavenlies for my life, let them be uprooted. He is commanding the mourners. When somebody prays like this, Oh Lord, let the wicked be shaken out of my heavens. Because to every man, an allocation of space has been given in the heavenlies. There could be principalities in your own personal heaven. Say, my father, shake out the wickedness from my own heavens. When somebody is praying like this, Oh son, as you are coming now today, uproot every wickedness that is targeted against my life. You are commanding demons. When you begin to pray like this, I program blessings into the sun for my life. When you begin to pray like this, Oh son, I have risen before you now. Cancel any evil program inside of you for me this day. When you begin to pray this kind of prayers, you are commanding the day. When you speak, you day, you will not destroy my prosperity today. As you are praying this kind of prayers, things begin to happen. As thou ever commanded the morning since thy days, and caused the day spring to know its place, that it will then take hold of the ends of the earth. That wickedness might be shaken out of it. The kind of prayer we're going to pray tonight, they are not very gentle prayers. They are prayers that transfer from first heaven to second heaven to third heavens. There are prayers that blows a hole into the defense of the enemy. And then it goes through. And then make it a practice as from today. Don't joke with your early morning quiet time. You can be excused when you go for an all night prayer meeting and you need to sleep. You can be excused. Because you will have programmed enough into the atmosphere in that all night prayer meeting. Believing God that you didn't go there to sleep. You will have programmed enough there at that prayer meeting. Beloved, know that I'm just speaking one aspect of a big thing this today. I've not spoken about the powers of the night. We're talking about commanding the mornings. Taking our mornings out of the hands of the spirit of the bondwoman. Taking our mornings away from abalis and sorcerers who program into it. Taking our mornings away from those who are doing the money dry fast against us. I've seen a sister before. And she told me that when she was in the world. That she used to do seven days fast. Dry fast. In order to capture another person's husband. I said, but who asked you to fast? I said, the Abba now. So there is satanic fasting. And for you to counter those kinds of things, you need to pray the prayers at a higher level. If a witch wants to fly now, but you have already programmed wars into the heavenlies, the heavenlies will not allow the flying. If they are firing arrows at you, as far as the arrows will pass through the air, and you have already programmed your wars into the heavenlies, the wind will not favor the arrow. Rise up on your feet. All eyes closed. Anything can happen here tonight. I just want to counsel you to concentrate. As we're praying these prayers, there are 12 sisters here. All of a sudden, you notice that your body is having some sensations. Don't worry. All of a sudden, you feel as if some changes are going on in your bodies. Don't worry. It will mean that an evil has been programmed against you. And that evil is being deprogrammed. All eyes closed. But you see, if you are here tonight, and you have not just surrendered your life to Jesus, do so very, very quickly now. So that you too can be a beneficiary of tonight's blessings. So right there where you are, if you want to say, you say I want to surrender my life to Jesus, just raise up your right hand where you are. God bless you as you do so. And say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you today. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. If you say those, those short prayer with me, immediately we close. Just find a way to the altar here. So that we can pray more with you. All eyes closed. My sister, my brother, if you know for sure that there is an array of powers of darkness gathered against you, these are the most effective kind of prayers you can pray. 
you know that where you come from, wickedness is the order of the day. Then, these are the most effective kind of prayers you should pray. Say this after me, sisters. Every power spending the night to pull me down. Can the sister say this with only anger? I don't like the aggression of the sisters to do. <laughs> yes. That's better. Brothers, can you shout it louder by the sister? Oh, son! Throw them away. Can you say this loud and clear? Uh huh. In the name of Jesus, let the sun throw them away. In the name of Jesus, If you are spending the night to pull me down, let the sun throw you away. Yes, continue, 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 continue. Aha, 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 those 12 sisters, thing is happening now. That's the first person. That's the second person. That's number three. That's number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine. Number ten. Number eleven. And number twelve. Yes. It's happening. The sun must throw them away. be released from the grip of the marine powers be released now in the name of Jesus you open your mouth like fire again all day all day and give me my portion in the name Jesus collect your passion in the name of Jesus oh dear arise give me my passion give me my passion in the name of Jesus Jesus name we pray say all day arise and cast any power stealing my portion arise and cast any power stealing my portion in the name Jesus. Any power sin in my portion. Let the dead cast them. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. In Jesus name we pray. <laughs> I wish you could see what is happening now. There is confusion in the heavens. That's right. Raise up your voice like fire again. Every wicked power in the second heavens that is representing my family. 
Can you say this with hot anger? Uh huh. In the sacrament. In the name of Jesus. Ah, 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 ah. Open your mouth, beloved. Something must happen. Something must happen tonight. Pastor Katea Boshent. Yes. Enough is enough. Be released. 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 In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Every rod of affliction from the second heavens. Can you shout this loud and clear? Jesus, break the rod of affliction in the name of Jesus. Masikate yabo shente yabo koraba, ribo soponde ke yabo ko shente yabo koraba, mapala boko sete yabo ko shente, ria pa la kasete yaba. Yes, 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 yes. Open your mouth, open your mouth. Break the rod of affliction. 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 Masikate yabo shenteraba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. name we pray Aha. you will not say this loud and clear bullets from heaven can you shout this loud and clear can you say it louder than this can you shout it even louder than that Jesus. Yes, yes. That's right. In Jesus' name we pray. Say this even louder than what you have been saying here since. That wants to kill me. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, kill the problem tonight. Let the problem die tonight. In the name of Jesus, let the problem die. Let the problem die. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' 
Jesus name we pray say every mouth speaking against me with satanic anointing can you say it loud and loud now transfer their arrows back to them. Can I hear the sister say what I just said? Every mouth. Every mouth. Speaking against me. With satanic anointing. Oh son. Transfer their arrows back to them. Sisters, now say it loud and clear. Brothers, shout it louder than the sisters. In the name of Jesus. Jesus name we pray every arrow of ancestral witchcraft can you say it with only anger in the name of Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus, then we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sing this song loud and clear to celebrate what the Lord has just done here now. Sing this song loud and clear. Victorious, yes, we are victorious. Glory be to God who has given us victory. We are victorious. We are victorious. What manner of man is Jesus? What manner of man is Jesus? He may not blind to see. Three prayer points before we go home. Everything stolen from my life by the powers of the night. 
I will possess you by fire. In the name of Jesus. Whatever they have stolen, repossess it. In Jesus' name we pray. The power of polygamous witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. That's right. In Jesus' name we pray. Affliction of the day. Da! In the name of Jesus, deal with that affliction. Affliction of the day. Command them to be dismantled and to be destroyed. In Jesus' name we pray. Beloved. Before you go to bed tonight, make sure you issue this decree that I'm going to issue now. Every negative flying power delegated against my destiny. Can you say that loud and clear? The angels of God shall pursue you. Can you say that and let me hear you? In the name of Jesus. Give that prayer point five minutes before you go to bed tonight. Every negative flying power delegated against my destiny. The angels of God shall pursue. Let us share the grace in fellowship.